Well, welcome back to part two of our series, Mind Games. I hope the 20 days of prayer and thankfulness is blessing you. Make sure that if you hadn't been a part of it, to jump in. Uh, we're sending out daily devotions through email. If you're not signed up, make sure to sign up for our emails. Uh, also, grab one of the devotional books uh, that we've had printed here at the church building. We want to make sure that you're part of this because the series Mind Games in the 20 Days of Prayer and Thankfulness are directly connected. We're talking through uh, the power of setting our mind on the things of God, renewing our mind uh, on the things of God, and really having God reshape the way we see the world and challenge us to have a positive outlook. You know, it's really easy in the world we're in today to, to be negative. I mean, you turn the news on, people are at each other's throat. There's a lot of division in our culture. But we as the body of Christ must be united. And I truly believe the way we do that is we set our mind on the things of God. And when we do that, it, it makes all the other things fade away. And we're able to see with more clarity people the way we should see them through the lens that God calls us to. We're able to see the direction that God has for our lives. And so as we dive into part two, thank you so much for being part of this, being part of a group. I'm so excited to see how God is going to use these messages and our time together uh, in your life. And so I want to start out by reading Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verse uh, uh, 21 through 24. I love these verses as we talk today about renewing our mind, and I'm going to give you guys some steps on how to do that, and then you can discuss some different things in your group. But this is what Ephesians 4, uh, 21 through 24 says. It says, Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from Him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. <laughs> I, think, I think we can all resonate with that, right? As we learn more about God, as He stretches us, we want to continue to shed those old things that weigh us down. We want to shed off those old ways of life because they have the tendency, if you're like me, to kind of creep back up into my life. And I want to shed those things away. And then he goes on and he says, Instead, shed those things away, put them away. Instead, let the Spirit, check this out, let the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God that dwells in you and dwells in me, let it renew your thoughts and attitudes. Let it renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. You see, we can choose to shed the things that weigh us down, shed the things of this world that we have the tendency to go back to. We, you know, we get removed from the, 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 the mud trough, but we have the tendency to kind of go back there. And God is saying, no, 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 no. You can intentionally make a decision today to say, I will move in the direction to renew my mind. How do I do that? I shed these things, but when I'm shedding those things, I am focusing my thoughts and my attitudes toward the things of God. I am letting the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit dwells in us. It is the power of God residing in our lives. It's something amazing uh, that is you know, so unique about being a Christ follower. It's a beautiful, amazing thing that God would dwell in us and give us power, and that's the connection with God, right? The Holy Spirit that dwells in us. But we have control over whether or not we suppress the power of the Spirit in our life or we increase the power of the Spirit in our life. And the way that we do that is surrender. That's why he's talking about you shed these things. You surrender those things to God. You remove those things from your life. And then he says, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. And then you put on the new nature. You remind yourself of who you are in Jesus, that you're created to be in the image of God and, and, to, and to live righteously and holy. And as we look at that, I want to give you guys uh, just four practical things. Uh, and I covered these in the sermon on this topic. And uh, you guys are going to have other conversation, and, and they can be around some of these things. But I want to give you four practical steps to renew your mind. Okay, now when I preached on this, um, I uh, gave Bible verses with this, so you can check those out whenever you hear it. The first practice to renew in your mind is to have a spiritual mind. You have to have a spiritual mind. You have to set your mind on the things of God and, and saturate your mind and your heart with the Word of God. You're not going to be able to renew your mind just by some self-help activity. No, it's going to be the Word of God. The second thing is a prayerful mind. You know, it's interesting when you have a spiritual mind and you're in the Word of God, what flows out of that is a desire to listen and talk to God, which is prayer is simply listening and talking to God, 
listening and talking, have a prayerful mind. The third thing is to have a celebratory mind. Think about all that God has done. Think about all the Psalms. So many of the Psalms are are writing to God saying, praise you, God. Thank you, God. You are awesome, God. You have created the... So we celebrate who God is and what he's done. As we do that, it renews our mind. And the fourth thing is to have a gospel-centered mind. In essence, what we just read a minute ago is to put on that new nature and, and to remember who we are in Jesus. And so as you guys have the conversation about renewing our mind in your, in your group, I just want to encourage you to think about those four things, to have a spiritual mind, a prayerful mind, a celebratory mind, and a gospel-centered mind. Those are the four practices to renew our mind. And when our mind is renewed, we align with God and we're able to accomplish and do what it is God wants us to do. And I'm going to tell you something. Life is just better. Life is better when we have more joy, when we're more positive. Life is stressful when we're negative and we think about all the things that aren't going our way rather than celebrating all the blessings that we do have. I hope that you guys have a great conversation. And don't forget, continue to be engaged in our 20 days of prayer and thankfulness. Thank you so much.